Hello everyone. So, today we are going to check out another AI video animation model and they have some new updated versions that allow us to do trajectory control as well as post control. As you can see in this video that I posted in a previous YouTube short, we can use depth maps, open poses, and other things like doing video to video generation. Through the depth map, we can use other text prompts and restyle our generated videos. Of course, with trajectory control, we are able to control specific animations in an image through the image to video generation process. So this one is Easy Animate, which we've used before. Well, Transformer Diffusions are getting phenomenal right now, and Easy Animate's latest update is version 5.1. When we scroll down here, the latest features they're using involve Transformer architectures to basically build their latest version 5.1, therefore they're able to create coherent styles in video generation, and of course there are some pros and cons. This model, as I've seen, although they can use a lot of control, trajectory pose, and even camera control, they are still very limited in the number of frames. As you can see, starting in version 5, they have 49 frames at 6 seconds per FPS, which is a very limited FPS and number of frames for generation. I don't know why. Like, in the previous versions, they already had 144 frames. But in the newer versions, they've downgraded even further. However, you will see that the quality of Easy Animate in the latest version, 5.1, is getting better. For example, using things like what they have in the examples here, like this one, they have better coherence on the robot, although it's very low FPS. But we can improve the FPS or set the FPS higher when we're using it on our own, so that's not a big issue. But you see here, they have text to video with Easy Animate, and you know the InPaint Easy Animate framework, which uses their models for in-painting. So all these examples are changing the objects within the video's frame, as well as controlling the video. This is the framework we're focusing on in this video, which is very interesting. Trajectory control, very similar to COG Video X, where you use a spline line editor and draw the path for the objects in the video generation. And as well as the control models, they're able to use open poses, scanning, and depth maps to generate video-to-video -video results. But then, one drawback again. This is a very limited number of frames that they have. We'll see how that goes in the upcoming examples. And right here we have another feature, control camera, something that we can use for, for example, panning the camera up. We also have other examples like panning left, right, and other directions. That's well. Not really surprising or special because camera controls are not very unique. Almost every AI video model is able to do that. But right now, it's more about the control trajectory and generic control videos using ControlNet. Not all AI video models are able to do that, or they haven't added these features on top of those AI models. But Easy Animate and Cog Video X, these are the two AI video model in open source that are able to do such things. So, I'm going to test the Easy Animate control, especially in the 12 billion parameter size. We're going to test this out and also go through how to install it, etc. So, go to the Quick Start section. As you can see, there are a lot of different methods for inferencing this AI model. But when we're using Comfy UI, this is another method. We don't have to follow the Docker installation or inference with Python, etc. We're going to use the Comfy UI method and go to this README page where it shows a very clear method of doing that. First of all, what we have to do is, of course, install the custom nodes. It's the same node as what we have right here, Easy Animate. Just type that into your Comfy UI Manager and search for this custom node. By doing that, we're in Comfy UI. Click the Manager button, and we go to the Custom Node Manager. We can search for Easy Animate. Once you have this, you're going to install this custom node, which is what I'm highlighting right now here, Easy Animate version 1. Then, you click the Install button. Remember, the reason we're only using this one is that it supports the version 5.1 Easy Animate models using this custom node. Once you install that, of course, you have to download the model files. There are several models, as I just mentioned. There's InPaint Control, Camera Control, and also Text to Video Generation using Easy Animate 5.1. This time, I'm going to use the control model, which is the Easy Animate version 5.112 BZH control. So when you do that, you're going to the Hugging Face column here. Click this link, and you'll be directed to the Hugging Face page. There, you'll find the files and versions, 
and basically you download all these files into a folder. That folder will be located in your ComfyUI models folder. Under the models folder, you manually create an easy animate subfolder, and within that, you're going to make a folder named after the model weights. So, if you set this up correctly, you should have a subfolder under your models folder. Once you've created that easy animate subfolder, you'll create another subfolder, of course, that will be named after the model weights. This is where you'll copy and paste the exact same name as what you see in this column, placing those names under the specific subfolder. Under the control folder, model weights, you're going to download the scheduler, text encoder, tokenizer, transformer, and VAE, all the files you need to run this. It's a very normal, practical way of how you run model weights. So once you finish downloading all these files, we can start playing with Easy Animate. Well, I've tried it. I've tested their default workflow, which is located on the GitHub project page. You go back to the Comfy UI subfolder and you'll see version 5.1 right there in case you missed it. Remember, when you download the custom nodes, they're already included in your files folder. So don't ask me where to download them because I've linked everything in the video description for Easy Animate. You guys can download it from the GitHub page, or if you've already downloaded the custom nodes via the Comfy UI Manager, you can simply go to your local files in Comfy UI, navigate to the custom nodes folder, find the Easy Animate folder, and go to the Comfy UI subfolder where you'll see version 1.5. This mirrors the GitHub project file structure where you have all the workflows to play around with. So that answers a lot of beginner questions about where to find these things. I loaded up two workflows from the examples folder, both related to the control model weights. The first one is for trajectory control, showing how to use the spline editor to create two lines, one for object movement and the other for camera motion. The second one combines two conditions in the trajectory base and feeds that into the Easy Animate sampler. Now remember, this is the Easy Animate V5 sampler for video to video V2V. This is different from the text to video or image to video sampling methods. Now, coming back to the first node, here, EC Animate Model, where you need to make sure you're using version 5.1. The configuration for this is right here. This configuration file is essentially like a text file. It contains the settings for version 5.1. Make sure to select this one, not the other versions. Then you can run the latest model, which is Easy Animate 5.1. Of course, there are some examples where you can test this out. Some of you might not know Chinese, so you can switch the language to English, whichever you prefer. For the trajectory, this is loading the first image for the first frame, how you want to control that image. Then, of course, you'll have some other settings in the sampler. Now, as I've mentioned before, one limitation of this framework is the 49 frame cap. I can't set it higher than that number. Doing so will cause errors when exceeding the 49 frame video length setting. I think this is just a limitation of the custom nodes, not the model weights themselves, because as we can see in the reports here, it's capable of generating high resolutions. If you have, you know, a powerful server GPU, not just a consumer GPU, you can render higher resolutions and even the generation times are faster, etc. But I believe that can be done. You know, the 49 frame limit can potentially be overcome using other methods, not just relying on the GPU. Of course, we can use video extension techniques to overcome this situation. For example, just like in Clock Video X, which I did in previous videos, I used the last frame of the video and extended it using a method like video continuation. In theory, this can also be done in Easy Animate to make the video length longer. Now for the easier way for YouTube folks, I've translated that into an English text prompt and I'm using the first image as an example here, an elf in the forest. I've already done some videos with this image before, so I'm trying it again. We're going to use the elf looking around in the forest where I'm using the spline line editor to control the eyes, making them move left and right at certain angles. We have to set this up correctly. For the camera motion, maybe just a little movement to the left, nothing too drastic because if you slide the angle too much, the camera will move really fast, go out of focus, or things like that. So slight adjustments or just minor camera panning are good enough. As you can see here, we have the conditions bound together with the mask from the first spline editor, which also affects the character or object's movement. If we make the second spline editor's movement too extreme, it'll impact that as well. So let's run this and see how the result looks.
In the meantime, while I'm running this video generation, it's costing about 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Of course, if you're running low on VRAM, you can still try it out by setting ComfyUI to low VRAM mode for inference. That way, we're able to do it as well. But on average, if you have over 20 gigabytes of VRAM, your GPU will run at around 16 gigabytes during inference while generating the animations. Okay, so we've got the result here. As you can see, the movement is a bit too exaggerated because of how I set the spline editor and that caused some morphing on the head, but we can still see that the spline editing is able to manipulate the object, in this case, the character following the motions. I like this framework. Using Easy Animate version 5.1, it's not only able to animate the image frame by frame, but also, as you can see right here, the borders are able to generate more content when the camera moves. When I set the second spline editor, there's a little bit of movement in this circle here representing the camera's motion. You can see all these background elements like the trees and other light objects here aren't staying still in one place. There are other objects being generated by the AI itself, Let's try out another example that might look better than this one. In this next example, I'm using another AI-generated image that I recently created for a ninja video story. I'm using it as an example to animate the hands. From the punch to the blue ninja blocking, doing some hand-practicing martial arts moves. So, I've typed in a very simple basic text prompt here to describe the motion of this movement, and I'm using the spline editor to make the two hands block and circle around in this area. Hopefully, this results in some smooth motion. I've added the second spline editor to pan the camera from right to left. We've got two trajectory tracks here, and now we wait for the result to see how it looks. By the way, the sampling time here spans quite a bit, similar to what you'd experience in other AI video tools. I've used about four minutes to run this without any caching methods like T-Cache, and I think that's pretty reasonable timing. Running it locally gives you full control over all the details, and here we have the generated result. It follows the motions of the trajectory fairly well, but sometimes we get some morphing or broken hands like this. In those cases, we can regenerate several times to fix that or even use segmentation with animated if to correct those hands as I've talked about before. It's easy to do that. So in the next example, we're going to see video to video using Easy Animate 5.1 control, where we can use poses, for instance, depth maps using depth anything or open pose. We can also use dance animations like what we have here, taking the source video, generating the pose, combining that, and animating it with text prompts to style and describe the character, or even the entire animation, including the background. Here's the result, and I've also applied an upscaler here to enhance and upscale the overall video quality. By doing that, we can first run this and see how it looks. Okay, so here's the generated result. And as you can see, I've used open pose. We've got a totally different animated outlook here. I've also applied another upscaler to smooth and enhance the video frames using VFI, frame interpolation, which smooths out the entire video sequence. And of course, that'll make the video not just two seconds long. We can set a slightly longer length here. So that's how we can use Easy Animate 5.1 and the control model weights for video to video generation. Of course, this is the first video generated in the first sampler, so there will be less detail. It's not going to have high detail on the face, hands, or the overall character. But, like in this example, we've got pretty good motion and are able to use trajectory control for both the character's hands in a martial arts movement. However, those hands can be fixed using Animate Diff, where we have the Ultralytics provider enabled in this example. We can choose Hands, and animate those hands, fixing them using the segment detailer in Animate Diff. As I've shown in previous videos, I've already demonstrated similar workflows where we bring Animate Diff into Animate Diffix by using the Ultralytics provider to detect bounding boxes and generate better results. I'm not going to go into the details again here because I've already covered that before. You guys can check it out. It's the same concept. All you have to do is take the output of this video, for example, here in the reroute, and pass the image frames of the video through Animate Diff again. Then you pass that to the segmentation step here to detect the hands and fix those hands in the final sampling steps. So it's a very simple and easy way to handle this. I don't worry too much about morphing or broken hands. They can be fixed. But as long as the video model, the AI video model, has multiple add-on features like this, 
such as control, in-painting, and camera movement, it offers a lot more flexibility for video editing and video creation, more than just text-to-video or image-to-video, which is what we see in a lot of AI video models available on Hugging Face. So I think this is worth trying out. Easy Animate, as we've run before, can take one image or motions like this and transform it into another dance motion or character, but now we've got a lot more to play around with and the creativity to mix and match different features of the AI models, how they perform during inference with different controls. That's a pretty good sign for open source projects. Well, when talking about high quality, it won't match what we have in other paid subscription services or models where they've already fine-tuned the video models. Plus, they have better hardware to generate those videos compared to what we have on local PCs. But still, we can look forward to open source video models. Just like in language models right now, we have R1, which is way better than a lot of other language models. Hopefully someday, video diffusion models will be able to do the same. That's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.